Hello, fight fans. Welcome to BBC World. Uh, as I always say, if you're new to the channel, please click that like and subscribe button right now. Right now, a big, a big, a big, a big, a big, a big. So, Daniel Dubois, the dynamite, will be going up against uh, Nathan Gomer <laughs> at the at London's O2 on July 13th. This is an article from the Daily Mail right here. The same, you know, newspaper company that called Anthony Joshua the son of Nigerian parents. And after Joshua became a world champion, they called him British. This dumb follow these guys are, are fucked up people. They are haters, man. They always favor you when you are doing good, but when you are doing very bad. They don't, you know. These people called Joshua a, a drug, a, a, a drug dealer back in the days, man. I can't forget it. Anyway, this is what they have to say here. They say Daniel Dubois and Nathan Goma put Anthony Joshua and Tessa Fury into shame by going to fight at London's O2 on July 13th for British Championship. You know, first of all, this is a very badass, badass uh, statement right here. You know, put Joshua and Tessa Fury to shame like Daniel Dubois. Is a kid, so they say, even as until the Joshua and Tyson Fury get ready to beat up a couple of four guys instead of boxing each other for war titles, two of the most exciting of Britain's next generation of everyways have agreed to put their futures on the line by fighting for the British Championship. And then the boy and Nathan Goma, who will clash at London's O2 Arena on July 13th, are. Uh, Thereby yeah, setting the kind of example which should be given by their leaders and for the time being their betters. Dubois, Dubois and Goma are both undefeated KO punches and at 21 and 22 respectively, but have been forgiven for avoiding each other until they capitalized their career. Preston, I don't want to read all this bullshit uh, bass commentary here f coming from who? Who wrote this uh, article? Let's see. Written by home. Can't find it yet, man. Oh, by Jeff Jeff Powell. I better turn that carry while I gonna say the Chris. First of all, when I heard this news, I was very amazed uh, for the fact that um, Frank Warren Frank Warren decided to give uh the fans what they want to see. I would have loved the uh, Joe Joyce and the uh, Dubois fight better, but I think this is a very good fight to measure the career of both fighters. Whoever loses this fight has nothing to gain and has nothing to lose. Because both of those guys are not the top dogs in the heavyweight division and they're just coming out. Dan Dubois is a guy who has 11 fights and 10 knockouts, you know, and uh, we saw his performance against Kevin Johnson. Where he went to distance, and uh, yeah, Aaron Johnson took him to distance, and they kind of exp exposed his uh, tactics. Dubois last fight against Dushalate actually uh, made us realize that this guy is not even ready, man. He's not ready for the likes of Efia Jagba. Jagba, even though he has 10 fights, will still knock Dubois out cold. Because Ajabba is a monster, Ajabba is a beast, Ajabba has already perfected his jab, Ajabba is a deadly, deadly monster, you know. And the uh, far between Dubois and Nathan Goldman, that is a very interesting, interesting bout. You know, I cannot wait for it. You know, at the O2 Arena, July 13th, that will be very interesting. And uh, I really cannot wait. I really cannot wait, man. Really cannot wait. Uh, thanks to um, Frank Warren, Fish Eyes. Watch a little me this for happen, man. This is a very good fight. And uh, two prospects going at it. Two prospects who really want to, you know, show who's the best. The best British everywhere prospect, in my opinion. Um. Um. Let me go to. Nathan Look at the guy in there.
16 fights, 11 knockouts. Nintagoma is the better boxer, we know that. You know, he's still very young, age 22. Um, he has 11 knockouts on his record, and uh, yeah. Nintagoma is a very, is a very good uh, fighter and uh, a better boxer, but we don't really know how how strong is uh, his chin is. You know, we need to really know before we kind of give our opinion about it, man, because it's easy to just say it, but to do it is different, you know? So it's interesting to see uh, what will happen. And uh, I don't know who I should favor. I'm gonna have to break this fight down. Uh, I'm gonna have to break this fight down, so... I would have loved to play this, but I don't know, man. I don't want any copyright strike. That's just a problem. <laughs> One of them fought Kevin Johnson, by the way. And is a very funny guy. Kevin Johnson. probably the most awkwardest person in the world to fight. He's very, very experienced, you know, he doesn't give you a lot. He's, uh, he makes you look bad, you know what I mean? You know, you can throw a lot of punches and he'll sit there and, you know, won't do anything, so you have to reset to go again, you know, to the, to the public eye. You think, oh, you know, it's a bit of a bore fest to watch, which I imagine it probably would have been, but on my side, you know, I've got a good 10 rounds out against a very seasoned uh, veteran in the game, you know. He's very clever as Kevin. So when this fight was announced for the Bowen McCrory card, which you're on now, um, I guess a lot of people, when Kevin Johnson was announced, a lot of people are naturally going to compare performances between you and Dubois. But you, you, you look crispy with the punches. You seem, you seem comfortable in there, didn't you? you yeah, I could have 20 rounds, to be fair. You, know, yeah. you, you pick your own pace with him. You know, He doesn't give you much to go off. Um, but yeah, they're going to pair, pair, uh, compare you know, performances, but that's the public in it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why they, they love boxing. He does a lot of um, talking. What sort of stuff is he saying to you in there? Uh, he's going like, come on baby, let's go baby, <laughs> and stuff like that. You know, he's, uh, he's definitely a character. To be fair, I'm actually a fan of him, you know. I actually, <laughs> he's he a fan of him. He, I, I am, I actually am. Uh, what, what did Ricky think of your performance? Yeah, he was happy, you know, I, I went through the gears as such, you know, I'm going to keep building on it, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting leaner each fight, you know, um, trying to get my body fat down, don't get me wrong, I'm never going to be body beautiful, I know that, I'm never going to be ripped to smithereens, but I can, you know, harden up and stuff. So it was good. Speak of the devil. This is baby. This is this is this is You who can see you? <laughs> first, I want to give a shout out to my mom, and I'm giving out a God pass to Bishop Deacon Choir Director, First Lady, for thanks and friends. Uh, my boy Bones right here, big you know G14 class 5 P44 type of individual. You know what I mean? Make it do what it do, how it do, what it do, what it do. You know what I mean? You got the man of the man of the north, meet the man of the south, man of the east. You know, good fight, good everything, good, good fight tonight. Kevin Johnson, Kevin Johnson is a, is a real talkative man. I remember good when he. Fight. Before, before the Joshua Bowen, he talked about, talked shit about Joshua, man. <laughs> and then I knocked him out. He's a very, very friendly guy. Make it right so we out of sight. That's it, gotta go back. Do you feel punches? <laughs> uh, I said, said do, you, do you actually feel punches when you're in there? Me? Yeah, like, no. Nah. <laughs> I like, it, in order for me to feel a punch, the worst punch I ever felt was Alex Leopold. Okay. And I shit you not, it's, it was harder than Vitaly's. Fucking it's out. like I, this. I, I, was so, due, I was due to fight him as well. And then before I came here, I had one week of preparation. Yeah. When they called me for this fight, I was driving from my house to New Jersey from Atlanta, 14 hours. Yeah. I got to New Jersey after 14 hour drive, fighting, man. kissed my mother on the cheek Thursday Thursday morning, got on a flight Thursday afternoon, and did the nine hour flight. So I did 21 hour travel, one week training. Thank, thanks to Andy Varese, no, I had no. one week to spar with him. So that's how we made it tonight. Yeah, night. exactly. I think when you, I think, when you think about the performance like that, though, you got to see, um, I mean, the fans got to see your arsenal because she's letting it all go. The jabs, the movement, the faints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was she trying to faint him out? I know she's trying to faint yeah, him out. Yeah, I was trying out. to faint him so he gets something to go. Well, that's it, guys. I think this will, this will be a very good fight. Nathan Goma, like I say, is a very phenomenal boxer. Still coming up. And uh, I think he's going to make 
Um, then the boy uh, realized that hey, you're not in there with a bum. You're in there with a very, very experienced uh, guy, but he's still a prospect. So let's see what happens. I like this fight. I always like uh, every British dust up. Uh, you know, domestic dust up is always nice. And yes, um, a fight between Joshua would be nice as well. Be huge, the biggest right now. But we know that Fury. Don't want no smoke with any fighter with King of the Universe. So guys, like the video, share, and please don't forget to subscribe uh, to the channel and uh, go follow me on Instagram at Boxing Block Center. DM me, write me, talk shit about me, all good, and as well follow me on Twitter at Boxing Blog, guys. Boxing Blog. Cheers, everyone.